Hi everyone and welcome to our September 21 series. Uh, our 21 series classes and workshops are offered every month on the 21st of the month. They are always free and they are always on a variety of different kinds of topics. This month's presentation is an online presentation, so I hope you'll take advantage of the fact that you can pause, you can rewind, you can listen again if you missed a point or if you want to take a note. Um, and so today we're focusing on advocacy. So this presentation is aimed at self-advocates, at parents, at grandparents, at professionals, uh, basically anyone who is interested in advocating for someone with Down syndrome. My name is Mary Claire Hulbert. I am the Outreach Coordinator for the Down Syndrome Association of Greater Cincinnati. And I will be your narrator for today's online presentation, but many people contributed to this presentation, including our Government Advocacy Committee, many different advocates, and I also pulled some really important information from a variety of national resources. So today we're going to talk about a number of things related to advocacy. We'll just first speak a little bit about what advocacy is. Then I'll cover a quick guide to government advocacy. And the second half of our presentation will include a lot of really great advice from fellow advocates. I wanted to include these photos because I think we can all recognize ways, uh, very big ways, that some people advocate. You can testify before Congress, like Frank Stevens did, and be featured on C-SPAN. You could be the first Gerber baby who has Down syndrome. You could be on a nationally televised TV show like Born This Way. Or you could have your photo featured on a big, huge screen in Times Square. But not all of us have the opportunity or the desire to advocate in a big way like that. Um, but we all have the potential and the ability to advocate in small ways. And I love this graphic because small actions times a lot of people can really make a big change. So when we talk about advocacy, sometimes the question comes up, who can be an advocate? And really the answer to that is anyone. It can be children or adults with Down syndrome, their parents, their grandparents, their loved ones. It could be a friend, it can be professionals who advocate on behalf of people with Down syndrome or other disabilities. Advocacy is simply support for or promotion of a particular cause or policy. We all do self-advocacy every single day, which is where you're speaking up for yourself, and we'll talk a little more about that later. Um, and then there's advocacy for other people, another person or a community. And I know many of the people who are listening into this presentation advocate for themselves or their loved ones in big and small ways every single day. I love this photo because I think it illustrates that you can never be too young or too old to start advocating. Emerson began going on advocacy visits with his family when he was a teeny tiny little baby and this photo was taken last spring in Washington DC. So this presentation is really all about you but I did want to talk a little bit about how the DSAGC advocates on your behalf. So our association advocates for people with Down syndrome every day through a number of different ways. These are just some of the highlights. Uh, we take advantage of public speaking and outreach opportunities in all of the 12 counties we serve in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. Um, we organize support for legislation that supports people with Down syndrome. Some examples of this uh, are the ABLE Act, the anti-discrimination organ transplant legislation that recently passed in Ohio, and the pro-information bill. Uh, we also do classroom presentations, educator trainings, and IEP meeting support. And we actively seek opportunities for self-advocates like public speaking or government advocacy opportunities. And we will often meet with employers from around our area to encourage them to consider hiring someone with Down syndrome. We mentioned self-advocacy earlier, and self-advocacy is expressing your thoughts, 
feelings, needs, or wants. It's asking for help when you need it. This might happen at school, at work, at home, uh, when you need help with transportation or perhaps with communication. It's also asking for independence when you need it, uh, like telling someone, I can really, I can do this on my own. Uh, and self-advocacy is simply speaking for yourself or on the behalf of others to the general public or to people in power. So uh, general public or people in power, when we talk about those people, we usually mean maybe it's a public speaking opportunity or a presentation that you might be giving, or it could be talking to an elected official who has the power to make laws. And that brings us to government advocacy. So I'm gonna review a few important aspects of government advocacy. Some of the things we are going to talk about are um, researching the issue that you're interested in changing, finding opportunities for change first at the state level or local level, how to tell your story and really engage your listener or listeners, how to create and maintain relationships, and how to build coalitions. Researching the issues. So before we can change anything, we have to fully understand our current issues and policies. Ways that you can find out more information about current policies and what might need to change. You can sign up for action alerts. You can read toolkits and guides. A lot of those are available online. Follow advocacy groups and legislators on social media. Specifically, you can follow hashtag 321advocate on Facebook. This will help you learn about current policies. You can also research what other states have done to change policies or legislation. If you know that Indiana recently changed one of their problematic laws, then that's a really powerful example to provide to Ohio or Kentucky legislators as an example. And through your research, you'll find out which policies or programs are helping our community and which ones are not. You can also check your state's upcoming meetings. They publish those publicly. And you can attend those meetings in person or often those meetings are live streamed online. And that's a really great way to learn how government works. State and local impact. So when we talk about government advocacy, many people advise to start small, meaning that you can make the biggest splash or the biggest impact in your own local community or in your own state. So first you have to find out who represents you. Contact information is always available online. You can find information for the governor, for senators and representatives who represent your state at the state level, uh, also at the federal level, and don't forget city council, your school board, your mayor, senators and representatives who serve us in Washington, D.C. often have public affairs liaisons or community outreach representatives based in whatever community you live in. So Senator Portman, even though he does most of his work in Washington, D.C., has a community outreach representative based in Cincinnati and it is that person's job to listen to your concerns and your needs. You should never feel awkward or like you're imposing when you contact an elected official. That person was hired and elected into office to serve the citizens, and it's their job to listen to you and your concerns about policy and laws that affect you. When you do get in touch with these folks, it's always a really great idea to start off with saying, I am your constituent, I live in X, whether it's a certain city you wanna share or the county they represent or a district. Sharing that information will grab their attention. And you can even invite your representative to meet with you and to have coffee and discuss issues. They do often have busy schedules, so they might not be able to take you up on your offer, but it never hurts to ask. Telling your story, this is the most important part of advocacy. I love these photos because they feature some of our self-advocates from our area. Up top, that's Natalia talking to Senator Coley, and the photo down below is Adam from when he went to Washington, D.C. last spring. So you want to define who you are and who you represent first. I, you could say something like, I live in District 7, I am a student and a volunteer, and I have Down syndrome. So you're catching there attention right away by defining who you are. You want to connect the policy that you're talking about to your personal experience. Give specific examples and talk about very specific situations. 
It's great if you can tell a memorable story or make your pitch relatable or engaging in some way. And bring pictures of the loved ones that you're advocating for if you're there advocating on behalf of someone else, perhaps your son or daughter or a friend. And if you're advocating for yourself, bring along a bio or a copy of your pitch so you can leave that behind with them when you leave. Part of telling your story is creating a very strong message. So before you make a call or send an email or have an in-person meeting, ask yourself what is the goal of that conversation. Uh, if it's something about a certain law or a policy, prepare that ask ahead of time. Do you want them to vote for something? Do you want them to co-sponsor something? Uh, make it really clear. Like we just talked about, prepare a leave behind. It's just a piece of paper with the details of your ask and perhaps a photo or two or information about yourself if you're advocating there on behalf of yourself. Offer solutions that have been implemented in other states. We talked about this a little earlier. If other states have implemented these laws recently and have found it to be a positive change, those examples can be incredibly powerful. And also, when you're talking to an elected official or meeting with them, thank them for policies that they've already supported that have impacted you positively. Everyone likes to hear about great things they've done in the past. And if you can, try to get an answer then. Say, can you commit to co-sponsoring this bill? Or can you tell me you're going to vote yes on this bill? Sometimes the elected official will need to do a little more research and they won't be able to commit right that moment but hopefully you can get them to promise to follow up and then you can follow up later to make sure that they keep the promise. A big part of advocacy is building relationships. You can't just go and visit someone once and ask them to do something for you and never see them again. And you can't expect someone to support you if they've never heard from you before. So part of building relationships is being bipartisan. The Down syndrome community is diverse and needs support from all political and personal backgrounds. We also have to be willing to compromise. The law that we want passed might not be a great law for another group of people, so we have to be willing to make change if that's necessary. Of course, we should always be polite. Uh, build relationships with staff and interns. They are the gatekeepers and they can really help us along the way. Don't forget to take photos with officials, their staff, uh, or if they weren't available in front of their office at their nameplate. Uh, this is a photo of Adam and his mom and his stepdad with Representative Steve Shabbat. You can then use those photos to post a thank you message on social media. Be sure to tag the representative or their office. And definitely send a nice follow-up thank you letter or note in the mail. It can make a really nice impact. And stay in touch with them. Send holiday cards and remind them again about the law that you would really like to see passed. Um, wish them well. Congratulate them if they win an upcoming election. Things like that can really go a long way. Build coalitions and community. Uh, we all know how important community can be and there's power in numbers. So find others who support you. That could be finding other elected officials to co-sponsor a certain bill, or and it could be finding other constituents or citizens that have the same needs or passions that you do. Uh, you can find some of these people through social media groups, through advocacy groups, and organize your efforts. You are more powerful when you are more than just one person. So you can attend meetings together, uh, you can plan to call legislators on the same day, or you can go to events as a group. Take advantage of resources. There are so many fantastic resources nationally and locally. So sign up for advocacy alerts from regional and national organizations like our organization, the Down Syndrome Association of Greater Cincinnati, or national organizations like NDSC, the National Down Syndrome Congress, or the National Down Syndrome Society, um, University of Cincinnati Center for Excellence in Developmental Disabilities, also known as USED. They are very active in government advocacy. Arc of Ohio also issues a lot of alerts having to do with legislation. Uh, attend local or national advocacy trainings or conferences. There are so many offered in our area and throughout the country. And you don't have to do a lot of this work on your own. A lot of these national organizations have will put together talking points about certain policies. So you can just borrow those and add your own perspective and you're good to go. So don't feel pressured 
to do all of your own research and write correspondence or pitches or talking points all on your own. There are wonderful resources available to you. Another really wonderful way to get involved in advocacy is to support candidates who are running for office. Um, ways to do this, you can attend candidate forums. These are open to the public and to anyone, so attend those forums and ask questions. Support and vote for candidates who make a point to listen to people with disabilities and to pay attention to their needs and who actually pass legislation that supports our community. If you feel passionate about a certain candidate, volunteer for their campaign. This could be making phone calls, knocking on doors, uh, stamping and addressing envelopes. Um, there are a number of different ways to support someone who you would like to get elected. There are a lot of ways to get involved and advocate other than simply meeting with elected officials. You can write a letter to the editor or an opinion piece for your newspaper. You can take advantage of opportunities to share your story no matter how large or small. Maybe you talk to students in a classroom presentation and you teach them about Down syndrome. Maybe you talk to a group of business people about hiring people with Down syndrome. If you get invited to speak and you feel comfortable, I say go for it. Uh, get comfortable in government spaces. This is a great photo of a group of people who went and took a tour of Cincinnati City Hall. It's a really beautiful space and we got to learn more about how laws get made in Cincinnati. Uh, offer to testify or give written support if there's a new law that you feel is a great fit for the Down syndrome community or the disability community in general. And if you're not comfortable with in-person visits, call, email, sign a petition, or make a video. You can volunteer or apply for an internship with an elected official in your area. You can also join an ambassador program like the National Down Syndrome Congress has an advocacy coalition uh, and NDSS has an ambassador program. There are tons of different advocacy days or events as well as forums and debates and you're welcome to attend those. You can let the DSAGC know if you're interested in advocacy and public speaking so that when we get opportunities we can invite you to come with us. And most importantly, make sure you're registered to vote and that you vote in elections. Your voice is incredibly important and uh, needs to be heard. For the second half of the presentation, I asked some advocates I know for some of their advice. I asked them to tell me what their advice would be to other advocates who might just be getting started and also if they're currently advocating for a certain law or idea to give us a little bit more information. So this piece of advice is from Jenna Wells, our Early Matters Coordinator here at the DSAGC and mom of four, including Ashton who has Down syndrome. And Jenna says that she's still very new to advocacy, but for fellow newbies, our legislators will only do or act if they know what their constituents need and want. If we don't speak up in large numbers, then things won't change. Tell your story and you can't go wrong. Jen Algy is on our government advocacy committee and offered some really great advice. She said, just be yourself and tell your story. Be personal, tell funny or inspiring stories of your daily life. There are many ways to advocate for yourself or for your family member, so you are likely already an experienced advocate. It's also important to maintain relationships with leaders and their staff. And when I asked Jen what policies or laws or ideas she's advocating for right now, she said she's spending a lot of her free time advocating for Sarah Bitter who is running for state senate in District 7. Because Sarah has two children with developmental disabilities, as I do, I stepped up to run her campaign so that she could make policy in the Ohio legislature for families like ours. And she also said that she recently advocated for the organ transplant anti-discrimination law that was passed earlier this year in Ohio. And she continues to email and call with local legislators when issues come up that affect her family or families affected by disability. And this is Jen's daughter, Evie, in Washington, D.C. last year. Evie is five years old, and like I said before, you're never too young to advocate, so she did a great job meeting with elected officials in the spring. Natalia Garcia is one of our interns here at the DSAGC, and she's also an advocate. 
and her advice is be polite, shake hands and smile, practice your speech before you go, be on time for your meetings, go on tours like at the Ohio State House in Columbus and in Cincinnati City Hall. And this photo is a photo of Natalia and her fellow intern Rebecca in Columbus when they went to the State House for an advocacy day. And here they met with Senator Thomas. Leslie Brown is another member of our government advocacy committee and she works for the city of Cincinnati. And we saw a photo of Leslie and her son Emerson a little earlier in the presentation. And her advice is uh, do not be afraid, speak up for what you know is right and just. When meeting with officials, do your best to get confirmation that they will support your legislative ask and not just say that they like the idea. That's a really great point. We talked about that earlier. And when I asked Leslie what she's currently advocating for, she said she's currently advocating for health care and IDEA and inclusion. Adam Moss is a former DSAGC intern and currently works at JVM Envelope Company up in Loveland. And he gave me some really great advice and said, before you can be a great self-advocate, you have to have a great sense of self-understanding. I have worked very hard to understand the things that I can change, like my attitude and the things that I cannot. I have learned when to manage things on my own and when to ask for help. Knowing my own strengths and challenges helps me when I'm advocating for myself with my family, at work, or in front of elected officials. Annie Callen is a staff member at Bonefish Grill and was on our board for a long time and she's also an advocate and she wanted me to mention that her job at Bonefish Grill, she first found out about that opportunity through the DSAGC and now she's worked there for many years. And her advice was before I meet with elected officials, I like to print out their photo so I can recognize them. I like to speak from the heart, but I bring note cards with me to stay on topic. And she said right now she's advocating for better transportation options in Cincinnati, specifically for people with Down syndrome and others with disabilities. And she's also passionate about having more self-advocates on the board of the Down Syndrome Association. Ashley Barlow is a member of our board, mom to Jack and Griffin, and a very experienced advocate. And she told me, when in doubt, just tell your story. You want legislators to know your story, to think about your family whenever any disability-specific issue hits their desk. Be real, no matter the issue, there are positives and negatives to every situation. Acknowledge the negatives in the ask and focus on the positives and leave that strategy to the experts. When I asked about the bills that she's advocating for right now, she said that we'd like to get together or get a bill together to prohibit the discrimination of people with disabilities that need organ transplants in Kentucky. And that is a very, our hope is that that will be a very similar bill to the bill that just passed in Ohio. Uh, she's putting together a collaborative of parents and professionals that will advocate for the elimination of charter school laws that were passed in Kentucky last session. And she's also on the NDSC's policy and advocacy group, so she aligns with their legislative agenda, um, which focuses on the federal level. Alan is on our board, and he's also a member of the Government Advocacy Committee and dad of Harrison and Mitchell. And when I asked for his tips about advocacy, he said, tip number one, make it as easy as possible for people to understand what you want and how to help you. And tip number two, think carefully about when to use your relationships to make introductions or to help you advocate. And currently his main interest right now is uh, promoting employment opportunities for people with Down syndrome and other disabilities that are affecting their employment. And Alan was key in helping us uh, find a job opportunity for someone with Down syndrome to work at Dinsmore and Schultz. Emily Chestna is another fantastic member of our government advocacy committee and her advice is to find a topic that touches you personally and it will energize you to hear feedback on it, both positive and negative feedback. Uh, I have felt very empowered by starting with a seed or a small fact and talking to more people about it. And the policies that she's currently focusing on, she's spending a lot of time advocating for state level candidates 
who will bring the voice of disability of the disability community to Columbus. Uh, specifically, she's advocating for Sarah Bitter and Patty Lawrence. And next up for Emily, in light of the recent incident at Fifth Third, where my husband works and was on the day of the shooting, I want to get involved in Sandy Hook Promise. One of the things I like about Sandy Hook is that in addition to gun sense, reg, reg, excuse me, gun sense legislation, they also give free trainings on recognizing warning signs of isolation, almost akin to anti-bullying, and our kids can certainly benefit from inclusion. Adrienne is a fantastic advocate who works for the National Down Syndrome Society in Washington, D.C. And um, I've had the chance to meet him at a conference, and so I asked him if he wouldn't mind contributing as well. And so he is the advocacy program specialist for the NDSS. And Adrienne said, embrace your individuality. People with disabilities are more alike than different, and we all have different strengths and weaknesses to embrace. We all have different interests, and it's important to tell your personal story. He also said, don't give up. Continue to pursue your goals and dreams. And when I asked what laws Adrian is focusing on right now, he said NDSS is taking a stand for the following. NDSS's goal is to end what they call law syndrome. Law syndrome is the idea that people with Down syndrome do not suffer from Down syndrome, but from outdated misconceptions and old, outdated laws. And NDSS is currently advocating for the Transitioning to Integrated and Meaningful Employment Act, the, called the TIME Act, which eliminates a section of the Fair Labor Standards Act that allows employers to pay people with disabilities less than the federal minimum wage. People with Down syndrome should have the right to make the same wages as everyone else. And this is a photo of Adrian and Evie in Washington, D.C. Our last piece of advocate advice comes from Rebecca Reed, who is a DSAGC intern and just started helping with government advocacy this year. And she says, my advice to other advocates is to tell them that it is okay to be nervous and shy. I used to be that way before my internship. My second tip would be that if you don't know something, you can always ask for help. My third tip is to be prepared. Start by writing your message and bring extra copies with you to the meetings. And my fourth and final piece of advice is that the voices of all people are very important. Let your voice be heard and people will listen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you appreciated this presentation and the information in it. If you're interested in joining the Government Advocacy Committee or would like to receive, receive advocacy alerts, please contact me, Mary Claire Holbert, at M-A-R-I-C-L-A-R-E-H at D-S-E-G-C dot com. Or you can call me here at the office at 513-761-5400. If you have any other questions or concerns or suggestions about outreach or advocacy, you're welcome to contact us. You can contact me. You can contact Jim. You can also go to our website for more resources and information. And always keep an eye on our Facebook page because we will post uh, occasional advocacy alerts there as well. Again, thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.